Thank you for joining me for this commemorative reading of an essay to mark the 60th anniversary of President Kennedy's address to the nation at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. His address occurred on October 22nd, 1962. And coincidentally, the anniversary falls on many twos. October 22nd, 2022. And this essay commemorates that day with a warning to my fellow Americans. It is called a premonition. Hell is coming to Ukraine as Europe and NATO have embarked onto the wrong course of history. There is a well-known saying attributed to George Santayana that those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. President Kennedy said that night 60 years ago, our goal is not the victory of might, but the vindication of right. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom here in this hemisphere, and we hope around the world. Alas, it seems evident to me that the leaders of Ukraine, NATO and Europe, the European Union do not study history and are plotting intentionally into a replay of World War II, but this time worse posturing arrogantly and toying with the prospect of, quote, limited nuclear war, unquote, which, knowing human nature's penchant for going to extremes, is a ludicrous term. There is no and will be no such thing as limited nuclear war. As some of my readers may know, I have pursued and practiced parapsychology for more than 60 years through the practice of Chinese martial arts, Taoist and Buddhist meditation, tantric studies, Kundalini yoga, as well as Western science, psychology, in order to develop psychic skills, popularly known as remote viewing, lucid dreaming, and OOBEs, out of body experiences, which for brevity, I utilize the acronym RVLDOOBE. For the past three months, I have been teaching online month-long courses, webinars, to develop and expand those skills and faculties from the beginner to the advanced level. As a result of teaching these courses and expanding my practice, my own abilities have been honed and expanded to higher levels. And my purpose in writing this is to emphasize that these skills are very ancient survival skills which have been suppressed by modern science and psychology to deprive the human race of them and to force humankind into a trap, a materialistic matrix that is leading all mankind potentially to self-destruction. Remote viewing, lucid dreaming, and out-of-body experiences are natural faculties of human beings which are as old as the human race itself which are recorded in the most ancient literatures of terrestrial culture and civilization. From ancient Hindu Vedas, ancient Chinese classic I Ching, and the Holy Bible. Many instances of the manifestations and use of these powers are recorded both in the Old and the New Testament, in which they are commonly called prophecy, with those who possess these faculties and the ability to interpret the contents of such visions both literally and symbolically, commonly called prophets, seers, and oracles. Some well-known biblical accounts include the story of Joseph, a Hebrew slave who rose to the pinnacle of power in ancient Egypt by counseling the Pharaoh and forewarning him of coming catastrophes in time to prepare for them and thus avert them. Another such history-shaping event was related in the dire warning by an angel, which means messenger, to another famous Joseph mentioned in the Gospels, namely the adoptive father of Jesus the Christ, who was warned of impending doom, namely 
the slaughter of the innocents ordered by Herod the Great, with the angel of the Lord urging Joseph to flee to Egypt to escape and save the Holy Family. Had Joseph not listened to the angel's message, which was given to him in a dream, Jesus would have perished in the slaughter of the children commanded by Herod, and history would have taken another totally different track, a dark and sinister track impelled by Roman tyranny and brutality. Every nation has its own traditions of its visionaries and its oracles from the Greek oracle of Delphi, known as the Pythoness, to the blind beggar in the Roman Forum and even Caesar's wife, who warned him to beware the Ides of March, not to venture into the Roman Senate on that day. Then to the French prophet of the Middle Ages, the oracle known as Nostradamus. The prophetic tradition is longstanding and continuous right down through the 20th century with the recorded prophecies of the Lady of Fatima in 1917, as well as those of Edgar Cayce, America's famous sleeping prophet, and the illustrious Eastern European seeress known as Vanya. I dare say that throughout history, millions of people across the world have been saved from disasters by what is popular, popularly called premonitions. And the stories are legion about those who perished tragically when they did not heed their own or others' premonitions. A simple word that means forewarning. Such forewarnings can manifest in at least three forms. Remote viewing, lucid dreaming, and out-of-body experiences. A term coined by a gifted American psychic named Robert A. Monroe, who inadvertently discovered and developed his psychic abilities after exposure to certain environmental factors that, that is, chemical exposure to certain vapors which released his soul from his body, as seems to have been the case of the Pythoness, the Oracle of Delphi. I cite the foregoing history of these faculties in the hope that the reader will take seriously the warning that I am out about to relate in the hope that it will save my fellow Americans, as President Kennedy often referred to us, from what I see as a potential catastrophe and impending doom for all Americans, which is the prospect of nuclear war with Russia being instigated by the deep state, the Biden regime, NATO, Ukraine, and the EU. Remote viewing is the ability, while awake, to see events that are happening or about to happen through inner vision. This faculty was formerly called clairvoyance or another modality, which is to receive extrasensory perceptions through hearing, once called clairaudience, which is to access and perceive information auditorily from nearby or far, but which is or would be beyond the range of human hearing, hence extrasensory. OOBEs or out-of-body experiences involve soul travel wherein the soul and with it the mind and senses are able to detach themselves from the body and journey instantaneously to a target to perceive the environment around the target accurately with clarity and lucidity as if the body was itself physically present at the site. The information that I will convey in the following segments was received by a combination of lucid dreaming and out of body experience that occurred to me before sunrise in the early morning hours of October 17th, 2022. I share it with the reader and the listener in the hope that you will join me in a vocal crusade to stop the mad rush of this administration led by Joe Biden, directed by the deep state and the World Economic Forum who instigated an unnecessary war in Ukraine and are rushing headlong toward a precipice at the bottom of which lies nuclear war with Russia. 
Those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. As I write these words, hundreds of thousands of people are being displaced in migrations and evacuations that need not have happened. But being driven by greed and the lust for power of the aforementioned parties, humanity is being driven and prodded unnaturally toward self-destruction and possibly complete annihilation. It is my hope and prayer that the premonition, the forewarning that I received will help us all forestall the tragedy, which if we act wisely and humanely is still evitable. Remote viewing and lucid dreaming and out of body experiences are ancient faculties given and endowed to us, by us, with us, by a living God, a God of life, our creator, to help us in the case cited above of St. Joseph and the Holy Family to escape darkness, danger, pain, and misery by avoiding them to find the way through truth to the light of the world, beyond the senses, to find the joy and happiness to be had at the proper end of our peregrinations through the valley of the shadow of darkness to arrive in the heavenly kingdom promised to us all who follow the way. On the morning of October 17th, 2022, I experienced the following things in the first person, just as they are happening in Ukraine to thousands of human beings who are evacuating and escaping from Kherson in Ukraine. And so I wrote, I just awoke from a nightmarish remote viewing lucid dream experience of seeing and being in the mass evacuations that are happening in Ukraine. Within just an hour and a half of time while sleeping deeply, I experienced many days of travel, travail, pain, and suffering. At first, I was driving a decrepit old car with little fuel and failing brakes along many roads that I did not know with several people in the car. Suddenly, the steering wheel broke in half. I tried to steer on ragged roads with other drivers driving the wrong way and crossing lines haphazardly in the grip of panic. As the brakes failed, I struck a motorcycle with no rider and abandoned by the roadside. The collision helped to bring the car to a stop. We abandoned the car and disoriented, I went on to look for directions, clothing, food and water. There was no food, no transportation, no water. There were hundreds, thousands of people around who didn't know which way was up or which way was out. I awakened after an hour and a half, and gladly got up and happy to be here, not there, and came to check my messages and email. Amazingly, I am reading about friends enjoying life in the Americas, including life out west, watching pigeon races in Mexico, taking seminars on the internet, planning celebrations, and other wonderful interests and experiences. No one knows what could be in store for us if we let power-hungry maniacs, deranged politicians in Washington, not only Joe Biden, but congressional chicken hawks, get us embroiled in a nuclear war with Russia. As bad as things have been here during the COVID lockdowns and recovery, as bad as the war has been so far for Ukrainians and Russians. No one yet realizes what is just around the corner for the Ukrainians, Russians, the Germans, and other Europeans if they continue on the wrong track of history. I have had firsthand psychic experiences of what it is like to be a displaced person, to have no nourishment, no food, no water, moving through cold terrain, not knowing where your friends, your family or lost relatives are. Finding myself to be a stranger in a strange land. I went looking for a train to New York, but no one even knew where New York was. And eventually any train that was passing by looked inviting, making me wish that I could, risking my life to escape, just jump onto it even without it stopping to get anywhere but here. I scaled down from the huge heights of abandoned industrial factories, climbing down pipes 
walking narrow ledges and scampering across narrow beams and rails, hopping from pipes to planks, from one level to another, avoiding plunges from the heights that would kill anyone who fell, searching for points and perches from which I could make an eight to 10 foot leap or drop to lower levels, seeking out the next footing or grab the next handhold before reaching bottom, only to find myself safe at ground level, but never knowing where the station was. Still disoriented, I had a sense and a feeling of extreme urgency, wanting, seeking desperately to go anywhere rather than to stay where I was and being there with no place to sleep or water to drink. My throat and tongue felt parched as I struggled to awaken. My fellow Americans, I warn you, if we do not change our course from the wrong track of history, hell is coming to Ukraine and Europe, and it is being done intentionally to destroy the world that we have, to be replaced by we know not what. But whatever it is, if we engage in nuclear war, it will be dark, cold, evil, and oppressive to the human spirit with mass death all around. Such a war would be, as John F. Kennedy stated 60 years ago on this date, a war in which the fruits of victory would be but ashes in the victor's mouth. Every psychic experience, every remote viewing or lucid dream has a purpose. In reality, it is a gift, a blessing from God proffered to our holy family the American people, that we may escape the perils we face to save humankind. And it has been given to us both as divine guidance and as a warning from divine providence. This is a premonition forewarning us that we must do everything in our power to prevent what is happening in Europe from happening here, as well as to stop it from continuing there. But engaging in nuclear war with Russia is not the way. In closing, as we pass through the 60th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis, through which President Kennedy successfully navigated our nation to avoid nuclear war, nuclear disaster, I address you in his spirit and echo and will re-echo the words of President John F. Kennedy and urge you to help steer our nation onto the right track of history and turn our holy family away from the road to perdition with these words, I pray. Let us not be blind to our differences, but let us also direct attention to our common interests and to the means by which those differences can be resolved. And if we cannot now end our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet we all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future and we are all mortal. We in this country, by destiny rather than by choice, are the watchmen on the walls of world freedom. We ask therefore that we may be worthy of our power and responsibility, that we may exercise our strength with wisdom and restraint, and that we may achieve in our time and for all time, the ancient vision of peace on earth and goodwill toward men. That must always be our goal and the righteousness of our cause must underlie our strength. For as it was written long ago, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watches, but in vain. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history, the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love asking his blessings and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. The words of John F. Kennedy cited above were compiled from JFK's peace speech at American University, June 10th, 1963. John F. Kennedy's inaugural address, January 20th, 1961, and JFK's forbidden speech, which was prevented through his assassination, which was to be given at the Dallas Trademark, November 22nd, 1963. 
Written and compiled by me, Robert Morningstar. A watchman for John F. Kennedy. New York City, October 20th, 2022. Thank you for listening. I pray that we will find the right track of history once again.